All right. Hey, everybody. It's the 24th of June, 2024. This is Cardano Go Live Coding. We've been meeting on Mondays to build stuff together with some of the Go libraries for the Andamio team to think about some development projects we're working on uh, and to think together about a Cardano Go development course that we're going to start to release in July. Um, so it's the 24th of June, and this is going to be our last session until the 15th of July. So we're going to take a little break here at the start of summer. There won't be a session on July 1st or July 8th, but we'll be back regularly scheduled on July 15th and then moving forward through the rest of the summer. Now, I wanted to use this session to provide some updates on our work and to connect some threads for where we can go next. So we had a proposal, which was really the, the starting point for the sessions that we're running right now. And you can see it right here on projectcatalyst.io. We're currently working on delivering the third milestone, which is what I'm gonna report on during this session. And then we've got a couple more milestones to go, which will take this project through the middle of August. What we do with Cardano Go development after August is an open question. And if our work is inspiring enough for these next few months, uh, we can decide to keep going in any number of ways. So how are these funds being used? Well, part of it's being used for the Andamio team to build some things. And I'd like to show just a few public facing demos today. And I was almost, instead of using the word public, I almost said student facing because I'm already thinking about these examples as being like the first thing that students can look at to wrap their heads around a project and a reason for learning some next step. And that's where I really wanna ask for help from the Blink Labs team, for example, uh, to look at and say, oh, hey, there's a library for this, that actually this would be a good chance to introduce this idea. Um, so we're gonna have an opportunity to do that. So we're thinking about like public facing versions of some of the tooling we're built, we're building to be educational resources. And then we're thinking about learning along with Blink Labs about the tools we need and how we can support documenting the libraries that are in development right now. Um, and so the Blink Labs team has already uh, released a couple of starter kits and those integrate very nicely into the Cardano Go PBL course. Um, and there's what's nice is that we can extend upon those into use cases by connecting them to some projects. So this is funding our work and we've been doing this together. Um, we've taken the lead on the development and the technical deliverables um, but we're collaborating with Blink Labs to build the course. We'll look at that in just a second. We've been hosting the Monday sessions and uh, Mix and Adrian have been in touch with Eduardo, who's the lead developer behind Apollo. So we've talked about a lot of this stuff. Um, Andamio CLI now is an output to this project that's named in the Catalyst proposal that like I just described, gives us a really nice project to look at throughout the course. And one of the things we wanted to do is have a roadmap to share uh, as part of the Catalyst Milestone Report, but hopefully this can give us a nice way to organize our work on the course as well. So we're kind of thinking in three phases. We're gonna build some utilities, some queries, and then some deployment tools. And this blog post right here just outlines these, right? So in utilities, we know that there's certain things that are repeated tasks, right? And so of course, you're always gonna wanna build utilities to automate those repeated tasks. One such task, and we'll look at this one specifically in just a moment, is saying, okay, datum and redeemer need to look like so in order for a transaction to work. And so I'd like to spend a moment today just looking at that current example and then how we might generalize from there. All of the examples we build here, once again, we can find places in the course to show active ways to use these, to remix them, to use them for some other purpose, for example. 
on top of utilities, queries, of course, we want to be able to get information about the blockchain um, already in the prototypes and in the pre-prod instance we've placed um, uh, for the Andamio network. There's some interesting data that's starting to emerge and we'd like Andamio CLI to be an easy way to get this data and to pull it into an application or just to review it very quickly uh, in the terminal, just like users might expect of Cardano CLI, for example. So I'd like to demo that briefly today too in a very early state, but as a way to think about what's next. And then the concept here is, okay, well, somebody, anybody can build ways to parse data to get a query from whatever source, whether it's an API, um, like, 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 a, like a paid API like Maestro or Blockfrost, for example, but also as we've talked about in these sessions, moving towards the, the common usage of UTXO RPC, which, which might still, you know, that can either come from Demeter, or there's places we recognize we can pull that data, but eventually we recognize that people can spin up resources on their own. And so in the deployment phase, that's what I'd really like to build, especially so that we can show it in the course is, hey, you don't have to trust this data that was indexed or sourced over here. We can provide all of the tools needed so that in a few commands, you can start running locally your own server that indexes the information that's important to you. So I'm excited to look at each of these. There's not much to look at in the deployment phase yet, although we've just incorporated the adder starter kit into one simple endpoint of Andamio CLI. Um, but these have kind of illustrative examples already that are certainly not for production, but I think they give us a good place to start. Um, so that's what I would propose to do next is look at these examples. Uh, but I know I just took a lot of airtime to kind of share some thinking about this overview and wanted to pause here. Uh, Manuel, Aurora, does that raise any questions for you? <clears throat> Nothing for me. No, that seems uh, good to me as well. I mean, not until here, at least. Well, cool. Uh, All right, let's uh, let's look at some details then, because this is where it actually gets more interesting. Um, in the GitHub project, whoops, got to fix that. Um, in the GitHub project for Andamio CLI, this is public right here. I'll just drop it in the chat. Um, this is also linked in that blog post. Um, there is a roadmap right here that just features the phases. I was describing some possible ideas for each of these that we can work on together and a list of what we've done so far and what we intend to do next. So that's the roadmap part. We can also now go look at the code um, but before we do, I wanted to share the reason for building um, this particular utility. Okay, so here's here's a Bash script that we've been using uh, in in prototype production for a project that looks like this. Okay, nope, not like that. That's the course. That's the blog. Where is, there it is. All right, so the URL here, cardanogoprototype.ondamio.io. Okay, what is this? This is the far end of the pipeline that starts with people working through a course. Okay, so we recognize that people might want to learn Cardano Go development, so we provide a course. Well, why do people want to do that? Well, hopefully it's because they're seeking opportunities to contribute to these projects. And once people complete some number of these modules, we can decide what the prerequisites are. They can get a credential that allows them to make commitments as contributors to an on-chain treasury. 
these tokens right here come from the Catalyst project that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so part of it goes to the Andamio team, part of it goes to the Blink Labs team for advice and for attending these sessions, um, and part of it goes right here uh, to fund some kind of work. Now, what you can see right here is that there's only one project listed so far. And give me just one second need to make sure. This wallet. So if I connect a wallet that happens to have a contributor token in it, I can see that there's a project listed here. And for now, it's just called example project C and oh, it was due last week, we'll have to fix that. And we can attach some tokens to it, some ADA and some gimbals. And now the person holding the contributor token is able to make this commitment. Fine. This is called a prototype right now because it's not yet connected to the course part of the platform. Okay, so we've got Andamio courses here. And then we have the ability for people after they complete a course to become contributors, but that's what's in development right now. And that's what we'll release this fall. For now, we need to practice with some governance questions. Who can be a contributor? Who gets to review tasks? And who gets to administer this prototype? These are the things we want to explore together. But in order to understand these questions, well, what does the administrator get to do? Okay, well, the contributor, they can commit to a task. The admin can add projects to this list right here. And basically the list of projects is in a UTXO right alongside the one that holds the actual tokens in this contribution prototype, okay? So we can build a way for admins to add projects here. And we have that, but there's a few problems with this. One, it's easy enough to build a form that allows you to add one project at a time. And we've already implemented that. It's easy enough to build a form that allows you to add many projects at a time. That's fine. But no matter what, interacting with the UI is at some point going to feel inefficient. And you can imagine a scenario where we'd want to be able to add these projects programmatically, right? Just build your own scripts to add a bunch of projects so that you don't have to go to the UI like this. Build something that can run just on a server when certain conditions are met. The list of reasons could go on. But suffice it to say, no matter what we can build in a web, facing UI, we might want the ability to add projects in some automated way. And so the script that was just on my screen here is a prototype of that. This is just a bash script and it's pulling in a bunch of different variables, okay? Of course we can, and I love using, you know, Cardano CLI transactions as pseudocode for what needs to happen, but you can see right here, right? We're gonna unlock a contract token from some treasury address, and then we're gonna relock it with updated datum, okay? And we need to create this datum, and we also need to create a redeemer to accompany it. And this is the sort of convenience that a simple utility is perfect for. And that utility is called right up here, okay? So in Andamio CLI, we have a right endpoint and a contract token datum function that simply takes a JSON file as an input and then it outputs the redeemer and the datum we need in a format so that this transaction right here can work, okay? What does the JSON look like? It's gonna look like this. We have to identify the policy ID of the contributor token so that we know 
who can actually commit to these projects. And then the escrow hash, this is what connects um, a validator that holds commitments in progress while somebody's working on them. So this is a little bit of boilerplate that we'll need right here, but you can see it's easy enough to programmatically create a little JSON like this and then feed it into an endpoint. This is kind of what we would expect, okay? So I wanna add some projects to this list and you can see that this had project B in it, which was used for testing and example C, which is actually the one that's still right here with its 12 ADA and 12 gimbals attached to it and an expiration date that already passed. So we need to fix that. So let's add some new projects. And in order to think about what these projects should be, let's just look right here, right? So this is a bash script. We've got a little bit of helpful utility coming from Andamio CLI, but it would be really nice to just build this entire transaction using the libraries that we've been learning about, using Bursa, Apollo, and whatever re other resources we might need just to really quickly be able to run this transaction. Then what I'm thinking is we can make projects for some of those steps, right? So let's just say one project here could be create project plan for, and this is the manage token TX. And let's just make it a little shorter. Make plan for manage TX, right? And we can just attach 20 ADA and 20 gimbals to that, right? This is something that we just need to do anyway, but just as an example, this works. And let's get a slightly better timestamp here. We can make this one do near the end of July. So like July 25th, after we're back in action, that would be the second session we're back. Let's pull that in here, okay. And let's use that same timestamp. Now, so you can imagine we can add a list of other possible projects here that can then be represented. Now, this is inconvenient right here to write a title this way. In the long run, what we're really thinking is this would not be a legible title, but maybe a hash of a Git event, a Git issue, uh, or it could be a link to whatever project management software. So our team likes to use Notion for planning, right? We could hash a link to that and make that connection. All sorts of questions about privacy start to emerge. That's really why we want to explore partner chains. But what we're really hoping is all of this kind of drives us to think more about those things. Um, but as you can see, it's always a web of concerns. Um, and, but for now, we could just say, okay, well, that's a project that needs to happen. And then we could say, well, what's another project we could imagine right here, right? If we were going to implement this transaction using the, Card the Cardano Go libraries, could I make it a task to query these UTXOs, for example? Um, or, or what else comes to mind? What's an, what's an interesting thing to implement if our goal is to replicate this transaction? <clears throat> well, as you just said, I think the uh, querying the UTXOs is actually a useful individual step that I'm not sure if it would qualify to be called a single project, but right, right, certainly a, a part of one project. And that's that's where the governance comes in. Well, what's a project? 
what yeah. what should be the scope of one thing that's another conversation we're hoping to drive here but yeah what if we just what's nice is that sure there's a transaction fee to update this list of projects but it's also a single transaction fee to change this list anytime that we need to okay all this says is that we approve of this work happening for these amounts of tokens and somebody can commit to it or it can be changed later. Uh, it can't be changed once somebody commits, just to be clear, but that that's also a nice, you know, like, is this project worth doing? The answer to that is in whether or not somebody takes it on. So what if we do a small one here, like query necessary UTXOs for the managed TX, but like that's a, that's a nice dev 15 minutes or half hour, or depending on what you know, two hours, right? Like it could be any amount of time, but like that's something where I would say at, at some reasonable hourly rate, how would a hundred data feel for a task like that? There's a governance question for you. Hmm. The point is, it's kind of silly and arbitrary to even assign values to these things. And what we, what I'm trying to do here is like lay some breadcrumbs for the type of conversation we're going to have moving forward, right? We know what it's like to govern funds at Catalyst. We know what it's like, you know, we, we know what the state of the art is for governing funds in a DAO. This gives us another place that we can really start to look at, okay, given that there's some 9,000 or so ADA for getting stuff done, how do we want to allocate it to the, the Andamio CLI project? and the documentation about it in the form of the course uh, to use those funds. And that's really what we're gonna be diving deep into. But let's suppose we make these decisions for now, okay? And we, can, we recognize we can add to this list later. Let's now look at how this is used in the transaction, okay? So we prepare this file right here, there's a whole bunch of variables that can be pulled in from all sorts of places. One of the things we know that we can build in Go is the ability to query these UTXOs. And as you'll see in just a minute, uh, these are just these are very slow, kind of silly bash utilities that that, that they work, but they're not very performant. Um, so that'll be a fun thing to look at. And then we can look at the rest of this transaction and make sure we have the ability to implement it. But let's run this thing and let's see the results because that's what I really wanted to at least share for the demo bit is when it comes to the utilities phase of Andamio CLI work, this is one proof of concept that actually does serve a really helpful purpose. It allows somebody administering a treasury that looks like this to very efficiently update the list of projects that we'll be able to see right here. Let's grab that. Let's see. If I could just make these windows line up, let's try. Where do you guys want to go? That's a little better. Let's go there. All right. Um, so I've got that Cardano Go JSON file, and I've got the script we were just looking at right here. And it doesn't need to take any arguments um, because this file's already made, and everything else is an instance variable. So we can run this guy. I save Cardano Go JSON. Yes. All right. That should just work. 
So there we go. Th those files that we need are already written. That's great. The bash scripts are kind of plodding along, getting those UTXOs. This is the project that we're adding to the contributor prototype right now. We kind of love that we're waiting for this to do the thing that we're adding the task to replace it with. But shouldn't it already be done even in Bash? Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, they're they're really hacky scripts. We just, you know, through <laughs> it just felt like uh, a minute or two to I know just... that was that well, that's why we gotta replace it, right? Like I said, yeah, we're right. Showing yeah. you all the dirty laundry right now. Um, <laughs> but okay, well, that transaction just went through, and as soon as now it's uh it's out of my mempool and on chain. We should see more projects here. Let's give that a moment. Is that script part of the Andamio CLI repository or is it somewhere online or is it? It's, it's separate for the moment because it's, okay. it's Kind of, like I said, that's really hacky. We did that like just well, we moved really fast and built something just so oh. that could be done. Let's see. Um, but yeah, I, I will let me add at least the necessary transaction to some documentation. And that's really, that's another piece that we're going to be able to look at right here in just a second. There they are. Okay. So now as a contributor, let me open this wallet again. Here are our new projects with those rewards and expiration times. Now, Manuel's question is really important. Okay, is that script somewhere online, right? Just saying this is actually really not helpful. Query what UTXOs for, for which managed TX, right? You, you already have to be an insider to understand what this project ID even means. So, Part of making this system usable is to make it legible to other people. And ideally, somehow, somebody would be able to find out the details behind what this means. And that's why, in my mind, I actually don't think what we add for the project description needs to be legible at all. I think this would be more helpful if it was like I mentioned earlier, like the hash of a Git issue. And then somebody could say, oh, okay, well, there's there's an issue. This is, here's the rewards for it. I can go now find that. And now I can go look at the example documentation, right? We could drop the script that we were just looking at um, into some resources there that somebody could look at. Does that make sense? Um, yes. <clears throat> So that's next. And now I, I now I don't know, right? Like given these, like this seems like a very small amount actually to do a really helpful task, but I really want to get, this is what I want to get like a bigger group of people together to think about how do we think about the numbers attached to these tasks given what we have in the treasury. Um, and so knowing that this is a conversation that we will have again in the middle of July, do you have any initial thoughts about processes for thinking about how many tokens to allocate to something like this? Well, my initial thought would be that it's difficult to have individual um, numbers attached to uh, single items if there is uh, only two items, so to speak. So if it's easier if there is a lot more comparability between the individual um, uh, tasks or steps, I guess. And then, and also, so the 9,693 ADA treasury is the final, it's like the whole budget or bucket, so to speak. And, but the, the, what you said earlier is basically the definition of what the 
uh, that budget should be used for, right? So the the initial stage of querying uh, your basically your intro, if I recall that correctly. So bottom line, what I wanted to say is it's easier to um, pin uh, um, to add exact numbers if you have um, more items that you can see and then compare with. That makes sense. Beautiful. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Right. So yeah, if we do. It would be much easier to have an informed conversation about this if we had a more complete list of the scope of work that needs to be done. And then we can follow pretty standard backwards planning uh, to apply that budget to the work. Yeah. Cool. I like that. So yeah, to connect this to the roadmap before our next meeting and to look at the full scope together. I think that will be a really exciting kind of governance facing conversation. Cool. So that's that's one example and we can leave this here for now and just come back to this. Obviously we need to, there's one demo contributor token that I hold. Um, and now we want to make sure people have access to the contributor tokens, talk about the role of admins and reviewers. But I would love to, when we do reconvene in three weeks, maybe the first thing we can talk about is the scope of this project and we can have a better high level view. Uh, I think this gets us part way there, but this is absolutely not a complete list. So we can look phase by phase at what we want to deliver we can look at the total project funds and start to really work this out. That's exciting. Yeah. Cool. All right, so that's a little demo of utilities phase accompanied by a bunch of other questions that it raises about you know, what that transaction is in the first place. Let's take a moment to look at queries now, okay? The early status of what this allows us to do and just like the serialization of datums and redeemers for the transaction we were looking at, um, this is just one example that we're then gonna be able to apply to other transactions, or in this case, other sources that we want to query. What we're gonna do here is actually switch over to pre-prod. In the example we were just looking at, this transaction is on mainnet, but the utility that we were using uh, doesn't actually care about the network, right? This is just parsing some data for us, uh, but it's not making any network calls. As we look at the queries phase, we're actually going to be getting some data from the network. And for now, that data is on pre-prod and it's the data behind what we're starting to roll out on the actual Andamio platform here. So um, this'll, be, this'll be fully live uh, in the next few weeks, but people are already kind of playing around and testing it. Um, what people have the opportunity to do is mint a token that allows them to enroll in a course like this one, and then to record progress through the modules that they're working on so that they can get to that point that I described earlier in this call, right? The place where they can say, okay, I've learned enough to now get a contributor credential and start making those contributions. Perhaps we will want to query this data and that's exactly what's been built into the prototype for now. Okay, so if I look over here at Andamio CLI, we can see that there's the write function that I just demoed with uh, the datum and redeemer, but there's also some queries that we've started to play with. And you can see that we've got the tip one that we, we, we just built as an example a couple months ago, and this will just be featured in the course. That's very nice. 
Um, and this shows people how to start playing around with some of the direct Goroboros starter kit interactions. Then we've got two other ones that don't do that at all. All these are doing is wrapping existing APIs to give us a place to start looking at this information, okay? They're absolutely not in production phase yet. This is just a proof of concept for where we might want to go. So for example, I might want to look at the current list of course instances on the Andamia network, okay? And so this is just a quick representation of what's on chain. We can see there's a UTXO that has some course instance token in it, and it's got some datum here. Now that we have this string, we could take it and do whatever we want with it. One, we could now drop this into some other API endpoint that's easy to consume by the front of an application where we use like a library like Mesh to decode this. Or, of course, we can decode this more directly in our Go code. And if we did, we could then present some nice useful information about the course instance on here. What's encoded in here is information about um, the different validator addresses and the different policy IDs that are related to a particular instance of a course so that we can, uh, so there's really no server necessary, right? Anybody can grab this information just like we're doing right here anytime directly from the blockchain. Of course, often people are gonna to wanna to use a more convenient endpoint, but that's what I'm talking about in the deployment phase is having the ability to now just take this information and parse it however you want to. So this is a very, very simple first step towards having the ability to query. And all this is doing is it's wrapping an API endpoint that we've already built and that we're consuming on our front end. So you can imagine, right? This is not, this doesn't look too useful yet, but you can imagine how we could make it so we could create a way just to list the transaction or even the names of the course instances and then allow people with further command line tags to go deeper into this information and maybe only view the legible details of a single course, for example. Any questions about that part? Very early step right here, but just as a demo. Um, yes, is this, uh, you said it's talking to the AP, to an API, so it's not directly talking to uh, a node and querying itself, but just to the normal REST API or whatever HTTP API that is then internally talking to the node? Yes, exactly. Yeah, we, we built an API that gives us this information for our front end. Um, and all this is doing in, in the Go code right here is wrapping it. Okay. And the reason, yeah, the reason I did that is I wanted to just have a place to start looking at this example. Let me jump to that for just a sec. Yeah, it's it's super simple and the real reason for it is that I wanted to have this proof of concept so the rest of our team could look at it. But let's look, that was, man, was that? Write course instances, no, query course instances. Yep, so there it is. Just hitting that URL and nice. seeing the nice. results, okay. Yeah. Dumb, dumb, simple, but now it gives us a way to say, all right, let's replace this with direct usage of Goroboros library or the adder library, or as we really want to get to in the course, just the UTXO RPC calls. Mm. Okay, so we have a proof of concept that pushes us there, but certainly nothing of substance under the hood yet. And a task. Let's make this datum useful. So that's what we'll do. Um, another example you can see is, is this global state bit right here. So let's take a quick look at that.
it looks just as messy as the other one. But now you can start to see here's people who are just playing around on pre-prod with uh, just the, the prototype of the course application. This one is uh, an even dumber command. Oh no, this one is the same. This okay. This one we're using our endpoint as well. Okay, yeah, just the global state UTXOs. But at least in this one, we added one more silly little layer. Um, I can query a particular party. Right. So just another proof of concept of moving towards the kinds of commands that people might expect if they've been playing with Andamio CLI to learn about how Cardano works, we'd like to provide a similar experience for learning about Andamio network by people who have the ability to play with stuff like this. This as well, I hope it makes people uncomfortable. It raises new questions about what should the names of these tokens be on chain? How do people want to use their name or alias in an on-chain token? And why does this make things like Midnight or other partner chains worth learning about? That's really where we're going here. We're trying to kind of push into why we why we want to go deeper into those things. Um, and we have a Catalyst Fund 12 proposal about partner chains where all of this is going to be very relevant to start to pull in. All good, Aurora. Thank you for spending even this much time. Um, and I owe you a next step for Digitalis, which I will hit you up with uh, by Wednesday at the latest. Um, okay, so that proof of concept is there. And once again, we're going to keep building from here. You can start to imagine some of the tasks that are going to emerge from this. Okay. Uh, and then finally, there's the sync. Okay, which just has the example sync ready to go. This pulls in the starter kit that the uh, Blink Labs team built. And then we've got an Andamio indexer that we wanna be able to spin up um, so that people can start to parse this data on their own. That's the third phase, the deployment phase, but we've got some placeholders for that. So that's the work that's ahead of us. And now as we start to organize it, we can work through those phases. And what we'll also do when everybody's together is start connecting this work back into um, the Andamio PBL course. Because I hope what you're starting to see is that each of these examples is gonna be a starting point for like a deeper exploration and a way to learn what the tools actually do. Mm. Yeah. That's the story. Thanks for being here for it. Yeah, I, I, I like it. I mean, and so I the the I have to read up on more about what Andamio internally is actually doing, but um, um yeah, having a more precise goal of where you actually want to go with go with go <laughs> um is uh, really helpful. Cool. And, and Manuel, yeah, I appreciate you just taking the time to, to hear this presentation today, but you can also use it as a model, right? So I have a, I have a special interest in building on Domino CLI, both for the organization that I'm building and for the Catalyst proposal that we're already here to deliver on. Mm -hmm. um, but really, the reason I'm most excited to have this project is now it just it helps the PBL course write itself, right? The examples are all just right here in front of us. As we learn to build each of these things, we document it, and now we have a journey to take other people on as they learn mm -hmm. the development. I think you could do something similar, right? You have an outcome that you're already invested in. You're learning things along the way. Maybe there's some proportion of that project that could be featured in a course for other learners. Yes, maybe. I mean, I was talking, we were talking a few weeks back, you might remember, you sure remember about the transaction scripting. So that's yeah. just something 
just for fun, not necessarily because it's useful for someone, but just a, an example of what you could do. I mean, um, and then, and then there's um, a, a ton of ideas, especially now after my um, our team event that I have in my head, but uh, I don't want to get uh how do you say that too ahead of myself yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's great i mean so i i think if an example is fun it already is useful right because like that's as as people work through this course it's there's so much learning material out there that feels like a slog and i don't think this has to right there's just so many compelling questions and if we put them in the right order, people are just going to be trying the next thing because they think it's fun. They, oh, yeah, show me how to do that part. Show me how to do that part. Yeah. So having a couple of projects to refer back to and not always the same one. Oh, remember on WCLI? OK, we're going to look at that a little bit more. All right. Manuel has been working with transactions over here. Let's let's take a deep dive into this part of that project just to mm -hmm. understand this little concept over here. And if you want to take a similar approach, like you can, you can see the blog post or the roadmap that I wrote, both are referencing what we're going to teach in the course. And so if you want to do the same thing to organize your thoughts around known next steps and possible next steps, then, then you can bring that in. And maybe we can even find a way to like, if, if we're able to say that, Hey, this thing that you need is essential for everybody to understand for development let's let's even put a project for that right and yeah sure so governing. i um actually just jumped on the andamio side is it, it did it receive a rebrand or was i just not on the right side the other times uh i'm not sure when the last time you looked at it was i mean we've been working very hard on it and it's gotten a lot of updates um it's cleaned up, but it actually doesn't have much branding at all applied yet because we've been focused on really the UX and the system architecture. Uh, I just was on the Gimbal Labs one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gimbal Labs is still, think of Gimbal Labs as like a community clubhouse where we write some content and there's some great stuff that happens there. Uh, but it's kind of like a loose and kind of collective place where people get together and learn. Um, Andamio is really building a very specific product to, to support that work and has a lot of different questions that come along with it. Yeah, I'll definitely check the blog post out. out. Cool. And, um, yeah. yeah. And by the way, another thought, because you said, well, um, it, it, it I think it would be difficult to have that one outline that fits everyone. And in that sense, it's it's just good to have pieces and bits that because everybody comes from a different place, right? Everybody has different levels of understanding. So um, um, I really like the idea that there's more of the, the the intention is to have more than one one project or one one example or one one path to go through, so to speak, because there is so much different things you can do. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I I couldn't agree more. And and we also we want to build courses where people aren't even locked in for the long term, right? So for example, somebody somebody shows up, they want to start applying some basic Go knowledge to Cardano Go and start developing. They, they learn early in the course about the project you're working on. It really strikes their interest. They start up a conversation with you. And before they're even halfway through the course, you guys are already collaborating on something. Right? Do they need to sit around and finish that course if they already found something else to work on? I would yeah. say, right? Go, go through the course until you find whatever whatever your launch point is into something else. And for some people, that'll be the end of the course. Okay, fine. I finished the course. Now I have this credential. Now I'm going to go over here and try start contributing. But for other people, it's they don't have to go on that whole journey. And so I, I really want to think about, you know, that's the reason we're providing people with these different options 
is because it makes it more likely that collaborators are going to collide and go off and do their own thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So that's where we're going. Um, we'll keep thinking about other projects too. This is one that gives us a place to start, but certainly not the only one that'll be featured in the course. And I know that the Blink Labs crew, uh, they're a growing team. And so there's, you know, they're they're thinking about what projects they want to put into the course so that they can meet their future collaborators. Uh, so that's going to get really fun to see how that course really comes together. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the planned um, roadmap? I mean, when do you guys plan on having uh, it released, the course? Well, we're going to come back together three weeks from today and start up these sessions again. And when we do, we'll have two primary goals. One is going to be to make a plan for accomplishing all those next steps for Andamio CLI. And the other is going to be to finish the outline of the course, because once we have the outline, then we can just put it on a calendar and say, okay, we're going to publish these lessons by these dates. Yeah. Um, so I would expect that we have that outline done and we're, we're, we're publishing maybe the first module by before the end of July. Um, mm. And then it's just a matter of building the examples and writing the content so that all of that can roll out. Hmm. Um, and that's part of why after, so I'm taking a, a little time away next week, but the following week, I'm really shutting down meetings just because all of that work I just described, that's the kind of stuff that takes deep focused time and it's going to be worth it for everybody to step back and go deep before we yeah, yeah. get into, <laughs> you, we know that once, once August hits the August through December in Cardano land is going to be. <laughs> so outrageously busy right? with with the amount of stuff going live the amount of chances there are to get together in person uh yeah. i want to i want to feel like i've got really calm productive workflows <laughs> going yeah. i feel really ready for it yeah then there's also a whole new wave of discussions coming up with this constitution thing right so exactly oh exactly yeah. there's um probably a lot going on in the in the next months so there is plenty to do yeah and that's why we're trying to have these like what what you and i had today is a tiny conversation about governance right that and that where we know we can invite other people into this we recognize that maybe a prerequisite is having a more complete list of projects you can imagine the sort of conversation that we are going to have in july about assigning token numbers to each of those projects um, mm. but I, I hope that that can be the backdrop of specific kind of detailed questions where people can come you know because because at a, at the global level we know that these kinds of governance conversations they can stay really general and it mm. can be hard to translate okay well what are the action steps right if 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 this is how you see the current state of affairs What's your next step? And I want to make sure that people have something at a very small scale to kind of sink their teeth into and think about some of the issues that I tried to mention today, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. how people make decisions about the list of projects, what information goes on chain, where do we need privacy? The list is thrilling, but it's it's long and we have we need ways to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. So that's the story. So uh, when is, you said in three weeks, that would be the 15th or the 22nd? That okay. is, Let me see. Just so I can also. We will, meet, we will meet again in three weeks, which is July 15th. That's when this session will start up again. All right. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. hope you have a nice, a nice time between now and then. Um, yeah. And thanks. For likewise. Me. Likewise. And uh, talk to you then. All right. Best man. Well, see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.